one of my films who got kind of enormous reason to be grateful to her. Because she's fearsomely kind of efficient at doing it. She's got a mission, which is to curate our lot programs of all the films. And she does it really, really well. The programs are very nicely balanced. Lots of really broad, oh, really, really broad programs, lots of really interesting stuff in them. If you don't like one of them, you know there's going to be another one that you might like along in a minute. And lots of people have said that. It's a truism in a way, but it's true. And she's also fiercely good at going on the show. So if you get a film showing one of Kerry's compilations, you find all of a sudden that you can probably see me that you've had something shown in the Ukrainian <laughs> National Museum or, you know, sort of somewhere in Bucharest or in fact you had a, some stuff shown in South Africa, didn't you? Yeah, so, oh, like last year. Just, just kind of nice for film and CV. It's also very nice to think that you work to be seen so wide. So I think that's, that's something that's, that's really, really exciting and I think she deserves enormous credit for that. And you can actually see the, the eight woman, eight to date, although I don't think you're getting a bit, and you're talking to me about maybe comedy yesterday, will you? No, no, I'm thinking of continuing. You've got, ah, oh, she's got the big <laughs> Okay, so eight to date, you can see them tomorrow, I think here, is that right? No, first four tomorrow. First four tomorrow, the second four on Sunday. So that, that's, that's definitely worth seeing. But there are more than the one minute compilations happening over the weekend. There's work from students at Hull College of Art and Design, there's work from a a community, Brownstone Community Arts Arts Enterprise. Arts Enterprise. Plus, it's going to be the one that Martin's going to be talking and about. And open here. selection. Oh, and the, the, the selection, the specially curated yeah. new selection from an, from an open call. Uh, I just wanted to talk briefly on what is it about one minute? What is it about the idea of doing one minute? Every, you know, you say one minute, one minute, yeah, that's really cool. But I'm, I, I was, why is it cool? Why is it cool? I, I think. The reason that it's really cool to do one minute films is because they they resist they resist commodification, they resist focus groups, they resist sort of tweaking to make things that people are necessarily going to want to see because that's what people think they want to see. If you look at what's happening in culture at the moment, you know, the box set is supposed to be the apogee of, uh, of what we, we look for, you know, hours and hours of television. And I look at it and I kind of look at the first one of the series and I think, oh, that's all very nice. Then you look at the second one and you think, they're doing that because the first one paid money. Not because they're doing great stuff, because they paid money. Then you look at the third one and you kind of think, oh, well. And by, by the time you get to series six or anything, I begin to hate myself slightly for looking at it. But the, the thing is that the one minutes are not at all like that. They're not focus group, they're not commodified. It's a kind of purity to the form. It's quite difficult to do anything commodified in a bit. Ads. Ads, it is true, there, are one, there is a one minute form which is highly commodified, but that's a very different beast. It's a beast that involves huge amounts of money. It's a beast that involves incredible kind of precision and care in order to get a message over to try and persuade people to, to buy things. And I, I, think, I think it is a, a different sort of beast. What are the one minutes? See, I, I've described them at one point as kind of one minute visual lyric poems. A lot of them are like that. They're like, we all did, I know, you all came out of the school and we did the haiku, or, or junior school level, we learned to write haikus, which probably put us off them for life, but they shouldn't because it's a beautiful form. And a lot of the films that you see, in the animation sequences, in the student sequences, in the sequences of Karen Curator, have that quality of being visual haikus. These delicate, delicate themes brought together in a way that it seems like that's the only way they could have been. And I think that's a, a high achievement. What other short things are that kind of come to Well, the joke. There's some jolly good jokes in the one minute thing. And again, I, I like jokes because they kind of, you know, they, they stick it to the, to the man or the woman or whatever. You know, they, they, they kind of affirm us, uh, affirm our humanity and our ability to kind of ridicule things. And there are those. And there are other things. There are codes. There's uh, Stuart Town's work in particular is codes or riddles in there. It's one weird one minute riddles that you have to look at and you're not really sure what's going on there. And at the end of it you feel like um, you've had your brains uh, stirred around. Then there are things that are a bit like photos, but not quite. They're looking at something very closely and things happen. Maybe not much happens and it's kind of a visual form that hovers between the moving image and the photo. Sometimes not really feeling like it's either and I find that quite exciting. And then, curiously, there's also the one minute epic. And actually, if you look at enough of the films this weekend, you'll realise that you'll watch one or two of them, and you'll feel at the end of it that hours have gone by. 
because so much has happened within the space of one minute that your whole sense of time has been distorted by it. And it's, I mean, it's a really kind of impressive thing. I look at some people who've done that kind of work. God, I'm jealous about. I wish I could do that. So, I want to finish by reaffirming the fact that what we see when we look at the one minute is a form that well, actually anybody can do as well. That's the other thing, especially nowadays with the with the um, the, the mobile phone. It doesn't mean you can do it well, but it does actually it's a, it's a democratic form, and actually you don't need hundreds of thousands of pounds to make a one minute film. And the, the other thing I've said in a little bit I wrote for the program is that not all of them are technically perfect. Thank God, I'm so sick of technical perfection. You know, it's a, such a such an overrated thing. Not all of them are technically perfect. They have a kind of grain and a glitchiness to them, which, which reminds us of the fact that we're human beings. And that's the thing, actually, that really is central to all the work you'll see this weekend. Some of it you'll love, some of it you'll hate, and some of it you'll think it's pretty good. But it reminds us why human beings make art, not for focus groups, not in general because they're worried about making money at the end of it. They don't make good art because they're too worried about making money at the end of it. They make it because art is a way of looking at the world in a different way and a way of affirming our humanity in the course of doing that. And I think that the one minute films in that sense are profoundly, profoundly human documents. So I hope that you'll and you know I hope that you stay for the whole weekend, go to as many of the screenings as you can and uh, love some, hate, hate a few, and feel inspired by the whole enterprise, because it's one that is really, really important and really, really necessary at this time. So, having said all that, I'm going to pass you over to somebody who's going to talk very concretely about the animation programme of One Minute Films that he's been curating and that you're going to be able to see tonight. So, Martin. <laughs>